Hello mortals! This is the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube! I've been talking about the upcoming movie of Dune for a while now. I even reread the book by Frank Herbert when I heard about the movie. And as you know, I am a huge fan of the novel, having read it when I was a teenager and I enjoyed it again as an adult. Heck, there is even a soft spot in my heart for the wild Crazy Pants 1984 movie version by David Lynch, which was more of a fever dream than anything else. So I also did a trailer reaction and was very excited by the promise of this new adaptation. The movie is directed by Denis Villeneuve and stars Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, and a bunch of other actors. <laughs> and now I have seen Dune. So what did I think? It was okay. Here's the thing. I had huge expectations and actually didn't do much research into the movie other than seeing the trailer because I'm always afraid of spoilers. But after seeing it, I have to say I was a little disappointed. Now this review is probably going to have some spoilery moments for those who know nothing about Dune, but this is for those who already know the story of Dune or have already seen the movie. So why was I disappointed? Let's start right from the beginning when we get a voiceover info dump from Chaney, which paralleled criticisms of the David Lynch version with a voiceover info dump from Princess Aerylan. And there are a couple more info dumps in the exposition, but let's look at that opening scene. We always hear show, don't tell. So rather than being told by Cheney about the spice production and the Emperor withdrawing her Conans from Arrakis and on and on, I wanted that to be shown. So how could that have been done? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Imagine this. The movie opens with a scene of the Fremen sabotaging the Harkonnen spice production. Then we zoom out and see it's a report by the Space Guild in front of the Imperial Senate or Parliament or some galactic assembly with Emperor Shaddam presiding. The Space Guild informs them, space production is down, and since we need spice to fold space and hop between planets, we're going to have to cut some of the trade routes throughout the galaxy. And then the lands rad, the planetary rulers are outraged. We're outraged! And Duke Leto Atreides of Caladan says, It's the fault of the brutality of the Harkonnens. They are turning the indigenous population against spice mining. Baron Harkonnen then says, No, it's only temporary. I just need more time to subjugate those darn Fremen. The Landsrad aren't having it, and they boo and hiss. And Duke Leto says, the Fremen need to be treated as partners so they will cooperate with spice production. The Landsrad go wild with applause. Yay! Woohoo! We cut to the Emperor, who looks uneasy at Duke Leto's rising popularity. A Bene Gesserit advisor whispers into his ears. Psss. Then the Emperor stands up and says, I agree with Duke Leto. The Harkonnen methods may have once been effective, but are now a disaster. I therefore decree that the governorship of Arrakis is given over to Duke Leto Atreides, and Baron Harkonnen must vacate Arrakis immediately. 
Then the land's rat roars with approval. Yay, the emperor is so smart. Yes, he's wise. Woohoo! But then we see the emperor exchange a meaningful glance with Baron Harkonnen. There, we just got a scene that shows everything needed to set up the main conflict. We see how important spice is for galactic trade. We see that Duke Leto is popular among the Landsrad. We see the Harkonnens are assholes. <laughs> we see that the Emperor is giving a rackets to Leto because of politics and isn't that happy with Duke Leto's popularity. And we even see the Bene Gesserits are close advisors to the Emperor. And that scene would have taken what, five minutes of screen time to set everything up and most importantly, show, not tell, what the major components of the conflict are. But here's the thing, that scene is not in the novel. <laughs> and that's what I think the movie's weakness is. And I know it sounds crazy, but I think the movie followed the novel too closely. There's a saying, the medium is the message. The medium is the message. What does that mean? It means that the medium of storytelling, either a movie or book or stage performance, is what carries the story, not the other way around. So the writer or director or whoever is in charge has to fit the story into the medium. For example, the novel Wicked and the musical Wicked are both excellent I think, in their own right, but they are completely different stories, completely different experiences. So when a movie is adapted from a book, the story needs to be transformed to fit into the structure or the medium of a movie. In my opinion, I think the movie followed the book too closely, so there were a lot of missed opportunities to make it into a great movie. And I felt that way about the first Harry Potter movie, I thought it followed the book too closely, so it ended up being a little bit boring. But getting back to Dune, the main conflict is the struggle for control over a racket between the House Harkonnen and the House Atreides. The movie ends in the middle of the book, but to me it felt very unsatisfying because it felt as though there was no conclusion. If the conflict is between the Harkonnens and Atreides, we need a resolution that shows the ending. In this case, that shows the Harkonnens defeating the Atreides. The end scene, in my opinion, should have been the Harkonnens moving into the Arrakis capital and restarting their pogrom against the Fremen. That would have closed the circuit of the story, at least for this part one. Again, that's not a scene in the book, but in my opinion, it would have fit a movie better at least it would have made it self-contained. Now this is a two and a half hour movie and I felt every single one of those minutes. Part of the reason for that, again, the medium is a message. Part of that was because the movie took the tone of the book. Epic, serious, dramatic, somber, and it didn't let up, which is the tone throughout the movie. Now, that tone works in the novel, in my opinion, but I felt that tone gave the movie a very monotone note. Now, I get it. <laughs> That's the director's style, and this is just my personal preference. But personally, I felt it needed some tonal shifts, maybe some over-the-top performances to give some variation of feeling. A little comedy relief would have gone a long way. I think they kind of tried that with Duncan Idaho when he teased Paul. Me hey, you, put on some muscle? I did? No. <laughs> it wasn't nearly enough. Now look back on the successful movie epics in Lord of the Rings, we get The Hobbit, in Star Wars, we have C-3PO and R2-D2. In Game of Thrones, we got loads of witty and body banter from Tyrion Lannister. And there's just none of that in Dune. And that monotone feeling was reinforced in the color palettes of the movie, I thought. There's 
not much you can do with the rackets. It's a desert, so everything is going to be brown and tan and variations of that. But then the Harkonnens were all gray and bald for some reason. Not sure why bald. And there were even scenes in Caladan where at night it felt very dark and grim. And although there were some daytime scenes, thankfully. But for me, everything looked muted, which reinforced the tone of the movie. And that's probably what the director was going for, but I personally would have preferred something a little bit more vibrant. Now, overall, I was fine with most of the performances. I think Timothy Chalamet is all right as Paul Atreides, though in the book, Paul is 16 and looks young for his age, meaning he actually looks 14 or 15, but I understand why you would want to age him up for this movie. Two characters, however, I was really disappointed with, and that was Lady Jessica and Baron Harkonnen. I actually preferred the performance of Lady Jessica in David Lynch's version more than this version. I wanted her to be a force to be reckoned with, to fill the room with her power and vitality. Someone like Gal Gadot, though she's probably too young to play Paul's mother, but what about Angelina Jolie? She'd be a pretty awesome Jessica, but I felt the actress who played her just didn't give Jessica the gravitas that that role needed. Now, as for the Baron Harkonnen, I thought he was also really one note and boring. He didn't show any emotion or motivation, really, which is weird because the actor who played him, Stellan Skarsgård, is usually a pretty good actor. Now, they may have looked at the Baron in David Lynch's version, which actually I thought was more appealing, but he was so over the top. He was played by Kenneth McMillan, and he was just sort of the mustache twirly muhaha type of villain. But maybe they could have found some middle ground. In other words, Baron Harkonnen needs to be more than someone who just eats and broods. Also, I was really disappointed with the Mentats, though they didn't really get much screen time or development. The Mentats are human computers because machine computers are banned, and the Atreides have Thufir, and the Harkonnens have Peter DeVries. Again, I thought they were much better portrayed in the David Lynch version. Sector 6, 8, up the 6th, the sun. The eighth the quadrant of the ninth plus eight four circles we the eight and call the fourth copy anyway i always found the mentats fascinating but if you don't know the story you won't understand how important they are in the movie by the way some people always seem to forget this but paul was trained not only as a bene Gesserit, but also as a mentat i thought there were a few odd decisions made such as Jessica reciting the litany against fear when Paul was going through the Gom Jabbar, and not Paul. And most strange of all was not having Paul cry the first time he kills a person, since uh, shedding tears was a pretty big moment in the novel. Maybe that's how part two will start, but that would make it even weirder because that means they would have cut the scene in half between two movies. Now again, I didn't hate the movie. I appreciated that the director or writer wanted to follow the novel as closely as they could. Even if I thought that was a mistake, I liked watching their interpretation. The cinematography and special effects were gorgeous. The battle scenes were awesome. And even if I wasn't really wowed by any of the performances, I think all the actors did a good enough job with what the script gave them. Honestly, I am surprised that it's getting such good reviews and it's doing well in the box office, but I am so happy because that means we are going to get a part two, and I do want to see part two. I give the movie three, maybe three and a half stars in the C plus, B minus range. If you've seen the movie, please let me know what you think because I know many people really enjoy it, which I think is awesome. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you want me to do more movie reviews. And while you're here, subscribe to my channel. Help a drag queen out. 
Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed.